Hello everyone and welcome back to Fantasy Forge, I'm Cameron Holt, and today we're getting back to some tabletop crafting. In my homebrew campaign, that's kind of an offshoot of my Waterdeep Dragon Heist campaign, which you can hear stories about here, my players are delving into the Underdark, and on a separate day of the week, I'm trying out Out of the Abyss. Basically what I'm getting at here is I need some Underdark terrain, and I don't have any, so I'm gonna make some, I'm gonna show you how to make some too. If all goes well, it's gonna look like this. It's going to be pretty quick, relatively easy, and all that we're really using is XPS foam and some sculpt mold, which is basically just like a plaster compound, but that part's not even fully necessary. I'm going to stop wasting your time and we're going to do it now. Let's do it now. Enough stalling. Let's craft. First thing we're going to need is a big old chunk of XPS foam. This is the pink stuff that I got from Home Depot, but you can get whatever is in your region. Just make sure that it's extruded polystyrene. I'm cutting mine into a two foot by two foot square. That's about as big as our terrain can get at the table that we play at. When cutting a large piece like this, you can just use an Ulfa knife or an extra long hobby blade of your choice. Just be prepared because it's going to be loud. Once that's cut up, we're going to use the other piece of the foam board to measure out our first raised portions of terrain. I'm just going in with a sharpie while laying one over the other and making a broad, general mark. From there, I'm going in with a handheld hot wire cutter and cutting out the terrain at an angle so that there's a little bit of a beveled edge, being sure to be extra wobbly and warbly for that nice rocky texture, which I'm going to hide later anyway. Also, always be sure to wear your mask when you're cutting foam, and open a window. Next, I'm using some more scrap foam squares to add another level to this cave section. Before popping my mask back on and getting right back to cutting. materials by using your offcuts to add extra layers. Ooh, see that transition? You'd almost think I have two cameras. After making these cuts, I decided to touch a hot wire cutter before adding one more layer to one side so that it's not so symmetrical. After that, it's time to glue all of these pieces together. You could use stakes to get a nice firm bond, but I'm just going to wing it with hot glue because I know I'm going to be putting sculpt mold over these later and firmly cementing them into place. If you don't have sculpt mold, maybe use some skewers, just in case. I also started putting a 10 pound weight on top of a book on top of these to weigh them down to make sure that everything's getting a nice, even pressure so that nothing sticks up. Do 
do the same to the opposite side and we're moving right along. You could texture the foam now, but I've got another thing in the store. Pick it up, give it a good shake. Make sure everything is in place. Grip the tips, and it looks like we're good. We'll go ahead and brush that off. And grab our favorite bucket. This is Sculpt and Mold. It's a modeling compound that's essentially just plaster with little bits of paper in it. Go ahead and pour some out before giving up and just pulling it out with your hands. I would recommend wearing gloves for this as it can get a little messy. Then pour some water from your finest vase. Before mixing with your hands or utensil of choice until it gets all sloppy and gooey. From there, you pretty much just plop it down straight onto your foam and push it into place. Once it dries, you can go back in with a wet finger and smooth things out a little bit if you want to. But we're going for an earthy, cave-like texture here, so I left it pretty rough. Once the sculpt mold is down, I'm going back in with a ball of tin foil, pressing in the texture onto the exposed bits of foam that didn't get covered. It's like an instant cave floor. Wow. Wow. Next, grab some chunky medium base, uh, also known as black magic base. It's just a mixture of black paint and matte Mod Podge. This is going to go ahead and seal our foam and sculpt mold, as well as giving it a black base coat. So it's nice and sealed and gives us a good foundation to paint on. Speaking of paint, here's me mixing up way too much white with a little bit of black and brown. Sure would be satisfying if it weren't so wasteful. After mixing, I'm going in with a large brush, getting some paint across all of it before brushing most of it off and doing not quite a dry brush, but a semi-wet brush, kind of like a half dry brush, making sure to leave some of that black base coat showing through. Otherwise, what's the point? tan to do some actual dry brushing, just hitting the raised edges of the textures. For this I like to use a makeup brush because I feel it gives me a good spread and isn't too heavy handed. Obviously we don't want our piece feeling flat, so we're going to go in with some brown as well as some purple. And just add some little splotches here and there. And it's going to look weird and splotchy at first, but don't worry. Once we put a black wash on this bad boy, it's going to tie it all together. Experiment with different colors. I know a lot of people like to use yellows and blues. But I found that the brown and violet really worked well with the underdark vibe that I was going for.
Now it's time for the wash. For this I'm just using a big mixture of black paint, mostly water, and a couple of drops of dish soap to improve the flow. Then, after painting it on, I go in with a paper towel and dab it off of the raised portions. Be sure to throw on a fun show like Dimension 20 or Critical Role while you're doing this, because why not? Once the black wash dries, I'm going in with a very, very light tan to do the final layer of dry brushing. This will really sell those stone textures. And look at those glamour shots. Wow. Nice. So detailed. Once the dry brush is done, it's time to reveal our masterpiece. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and leave a like and a comment down below. This Friday, April 30th, that's tomorrow, I'm going to be live streaming the new Pokemon Snap on the Switch over at twitch.tv slash thefantasyforge. There's a link in the description below. Go ahead and give it a heart and a follow so that you'll know when we go live, and I will see all of you there. If it's confusing to you why I'm going to be streaming the new Pokemon Snap, then clearly you don't know about my other content, where I mash up D&D monsters with Pokemon all the time, as well as Dark Souls bosses with Pokemon, and Pokemon with each other. Anything that you can think of, I'm going to mix it with a Pokemon. So, I'm going to be streaming Pokemon Snap on Friday. I hope to see you there. And as always, I will see you in the next video. But until then, stay safe out there, adventurers.